On today's episode, we're going to be talking about printer upgrades and repairs that you may need to tackle during the lifespan of your 3D printer. In our case, it's kind of both an upgrade and a repair. Specifically, what I'm going to be doing is repairing Ian's current extruder for his Lulzbot Mini, which was oozing filament out of the heat break. And then also, I'm going to be replacing the hot end itself uh, on the whole assembly with a 1.75 millimeter version. That way, you can have access to a wider variety of filament options with this 3D printing. Here we have the whole extruder assembly from the Lulzbot Mini. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap it out for a... Uh, 1.75 millimeter hot end instead of the three millimeter just mostly not really necessarily because anything's wrong with the three but the 1.75 just really gives it a lot more a lot more options in picking out filament uh the three millimeter mark is still not as diverse as the 1.75 and it's not nearly as expansive uh, at the moment, but it's it's getting bigger and bigger, and it it'll get there. Uh, yeah, tools, but it should be it. So these two that I could see so far. So let's start by taking off the fan. Oh, well, there's two little screws hiding right there that attach the the fan shroud to the body here. Normally, if I had lots and lots of screws, I would have a piece of tape here with the sticky side up, or maybe just double side tape, just so I could stick the screws on there. Uh, and not lose them so easily. But there, there's not too many here, so it shouldn't be too bad. Uh, okay. There's a, the three millimeter head. You can see here, this, this here is the same hexagon head, um, but 7.5, one point se the 1.75 millimeter version of the same head. Um, so it should be just a uh, matter of unhooking the, the matter of uh, disconnecting the thermistor and the heater cartridge from the old one and just uh, just placing it into the, the new one and should be that simple really. On, on the Lowe's Bolt Mini on the Lulzbot Mini, because it has the auto tramming, auto leveling feature, there's a grounding wire here that bolts right in. That way, when it comes down and touches each corner, uh, that's what makes the trigger uh, in the computer in the little Arduino. It tells it, you know, where, where, how far down it hit, and that uses those calculations uh, for the auto tramming and auto leveling. The new one comes with the new heater cartridge, new thermistor, some wiring, a new fan, a little wrench, a little quick release, uh, Allen key, and a new plate. Uh, since it's since it's really the same same hardware, uh, I'm just gonna keep these as spares in case these ever go out, and then I'm just gonna uh, just hook all this up into the to the 1.75 millimeter. Um, I'm not going to use any Loctite on this one, but I did already use some Loctite to seal in the the nozzle and the heat break into the the block itself, just so it creates a nice seal and prevents any leakage and uh, or from it getting loose at all and things like that. Uh, it's just a little extra security. Uh, you don't want just some random oozing when you're 12 hours into a 14-hour a print or anything like that. Grounding wire, I am going to have to use the old bolt just because they don't have one 
uh, in the kit, but I mean, it's, it's, a uh, it's more of a generic kit for any, uh, Lowe's bought machine, uh, like the Taz or anything like that, um, which don't have the grounding wire on it. Um, but fortunately it still has a little, little, uh, screw hole for the, the grounding bolt to be put in. Aluminum tends to be a softer metal, so it's easy to easier to cross the thread. So if you basically uh, turn it to the left, like you're unscrewing it, you could you could do that until you could feel it go and in, lock into, or or I should say fall fall into the thread. Is it probably a better way to uh, describe it? It falls right into the beginning of the thread, and then you can start screwing it in. That way you don't cross your threads. And again, it's a it's aluminum, so it doesn't doesn't have to be too crazy tight because uh, the the threads could actually flex and bend. I've done that before, where I've tightened it too much and then bent the actual thread and then couldn't get anything out. And that was a lot of fun. All right. Okay, now with the little bolt out. Uh, positioned it into the same position as this one, this original one. So I'm dropping some Loctite in there, just like they have on the original one. Probably to keep this from jiggling around or wobbling or anything. Although it's pretty, it's in there pretty, pretty good. I like to put a little dab on the hole, and then the rest. On the thread itself, this stuff works pretty well. You don't need too much because uh, you don't need too much mainly because uh, there's really not much space between the the bolt and the thread, so any little amount you get will will spread around the whole thing. place in the same order I took it out so let's see if I can figure this, figure this out. usually it's good to take a picture beforehand before you start taking things apart and I did take a picture in case I need to reference it um, but I should be able to get this back on all right that looks a lot better now Good, looks good. 